return. I hope that everybody's having um, a really successful and productive first week back of the term. Um, I just wanted to share with you some of the fab outcomes from Monday's lesson and to say well done because I think that's the highest submission rate I've had um, for year 10. So it's really, really amazing to see you working hard and continuously listen to feedback and improvements and really, really working hard. So a really big well done um, and I'm really, really proud and impressed of the communication that I've seen so far this week. So let's continue that and let's have a really fab Thursday's lesson. So um, some really good examples of more bleach and ink experiments that I wanted to share with you. Just a few here that were submitted to me from Monday. Um, I'm really liking the techniques and texture that's used in some of these. So here we can see, you know, the bleach and ink has really, really helped create this floral detail. And then also in the middle, there's a different colour. Um, and some further detail, you know, could be developed there as well. Um, but it really gives that illusion of this kind of natural forms, um, obviously flower-like shape, um, because obviously, you know, flowers and natural forms are made up of hundreds of colours um, and tones. Again, I really, really love this piece. Um, I like the way they've used collage in the background, um, and I really love how the bleach has been used delicately in almost line like forms and it creates a beautiful really stunning detail so don't forget you're using the bleach and ink method to apply detail to make it look realistic and like the intended drawing that you're trying to draw for example the flower they've used this to create the almost the veins um and you know the the kind of loose textures that would come from the stem right up into the flower um, and the different pigments, so these would be pigments. So really think about how you can combine different mediums and materials to do that. Um, again, some nice experiments here, um, some discussion on refining, just to get details. Try to avoid outlining things in black because it gives it like a like a cartoon kind of effect. Um, and I really, really want these to look a little bit more realistic, but I love this tone under this one. You can really see the texture, which is fantastic. Again, some really nice labelled experiments. So um, I think, again, um, feedback mainly is pick up the pace, produce more, more, more. Um, because I think that some people are just doing really, really quick, small things and not spending enough time on them. Um, but you should be spending, you know, between one and two hours at a time per lesson on each task um, to increase... Um, quality and to improve volume of work and um, I just want to quickly go back to um, you know further experiment and I've done a few more on mine to show you because I've said to a lot of people about mark making um, when I say mark making I mean you know different types of lines whether it be short quick lines it could be almost like um, a layered spiral effect it could be zigzags it could be dotting circles but I really want you to just push this idea. You know, you could do a test sheet like this that doesn't have necessarily, you know, um, specific drawings of, of, of specific natural forms items. But then it might be, for example, that this almost looked like a flower and it then inspired something like this. So it could link from that to that. And it is all about testing out colours. Some people aren't, you know, testing colours and techniques enough. I don't just want to see blink, bleach and ink now. I want to see more. I want to see the next level. I want to see you combining things, combining collage, you know, adding in pen or pencil to it as well, as well as these lovely, you know, line effects, techniques and textures. So you need to bring it all together. Start to develop by bringing each thing together from development phase, further into development, and then, you know, more thorough into trying out different techniques, backgrounds, etc. So what are you going to be doing today? Well, as well as making some improvements on that, um, and you can you can make your improvements from these over the week for homework. The main focus of Thursday's lesson today is you are going to have a go at making your own monoprints using a tea bag. So what is a monoprint? You might have come across it, um, you know, in key stage three, but effectively a monoprint is a type of print that can only be printed in that specific pattern once. And it's something artists have been using for thousands of years in their work. Um, it is great to create block shapes. 
um, and it is really, really simple to do. So the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery, um, one of the most famous galleries um, in London, they've got galleries internationally. They posted a really fantastic, simple step-by-step -step video of how to make your own monoprint using a tea bag. So I was going to remake the video of me showing you how to do it. And I thought, no, do you know what? They've done such a fabulous job and made it so simple that I thought it's best if you just watch the video. So I would like you to watch this video. It's only uh, five minutes long. Not even that, maybe. No, it's shorter than that. It's a really quick video. But it talks about making a monoprint using just acrylic paint and a tea bag. And the artist also talks through her inspiration. Don't forget yours must link to natural forms, but you can take this method and technique. So I will put the link to the video on there. If you have a problem with the link um, and you can access Facebook or just type it into Google, type in um, mono printing with a tea bag, National Gallery it is on the bottom here, so you should be able to find it. Um, and she talks about building up the layers in the process. So you want to see what it looks like? Well, I'm going to show you. I had a go at this over the weekend myself. I just used some different colours. So what I did, I used some neon and fluorescent paint because actually I was inspired by the photos that I took on my walk last week. Um, so this is what I really want you to start doing is thinking about natural forms around you, not just using you know, a picture of a flower off the internet. I want you to start taking photos for yourself. Next week's lesson is going to focus, and so next Monday, um, that will focus on you taking photos, and I'm going to teach you some tips on taking photos on your phone, what makes a good photo, um, what makes a bad photo, and some easy tips and tricks for, you know, finding great things to take photos of. So these are my photos. Um, I found these beautiful flowers. I took some close-ups and some that were further back, and it was the colours that really, really inspired me, the colours and the shapes. I really like the movement of them in the wind. I, they really caught my eye. So I don't just want to, you know, draw exactly what I see, because that wouldn't be creative. That wouldn't be you um, providing and proving yourself as a designer. And that's the whole purpose of art, is, is you are learning to be an artist in your own right, not copy the work of others. Take inspiration from, but not copy. So I am really interested in um, abstract art, as I'm sure you've realised by now with my bright colours that I like. Um, and obviously these flowers also influenced me, but I wanted to keep in mind the project theme of natural forms. So um, I did the tea bag method. As you can see here, I just painted straight onto my tea bag. Again, I've been left some residue, so you might need to make sure that your tea bag doesn't have... Um, any tea still in it once you've um once you've once you've finished using it for your tea um but you can see that in the video so you need to press off the excess however i say that but i quite like this mottled effect that's been created maybe i could make something out of it um but i printed my tea bags i did some different mark making all i did was paint my tea bags in different colors different patterns and then tested out printing these were all tests nothing was perfection i've not got to that point yet i then thought right how can I incorporate natural forms what can I take from this so I started to use the different shapes that I printed to then form this flower that was inspired by this here so you can see I've started to work into that I've started to create some patterns off patterns effectively from my mono printing you don't have to use you know specific colors it's all about testing and trialing I just happened to use this bright color palette um because I felt like it was quite summery and it really fitted this this theme of photography that I'd, I'd taken. Um, so that was just one experiment. Obviously, the next step would be that I'm going to have a go at these other ones as well um, and see if I can create some new patterns, shapes, add some different colours. Maybe I'll combine some of these colours. Maybe I'll combine some of the grass. And the idea is you're creating ideas off ideas. So monotype is a really, really... Monotype and monoprint is a really, really quick way to be able to do this. Um, you know, you just paint the tea bag very quickly and it prints really, really clearly and well. Now you could try it with watercolour. It might not work as well. Um, it definitely works better with thick acrylic paint, no water added. Um, you might need two paintbrushes. Um, you don't have to use a paintbrush. Yeah, you can do anything, use anything for the mark making. It could be that you use a sponge, um, whatever you feel, but I would really like to see just loads of tests. It might be that you actually draw shapes to print. Yeah, so you could draw a flower to then print. 
instead of a circle. You know, I could have drawn a flower, but it's up to you. This is just experimenting with mono printing. So you can see what I've got from that. I also did another one. Um, this again did focus on my photography and I really liked the idea of using this particular flower. Again, it's a work in progress. I also use kind of like an abstract um, pattern that I took the yellow from my photographs. But this was a little bit more modern art, a bit like when we looked at um, creating our own paintings using the artist's abstract influence. So again, I've really, really done several processes on this. I started off just using the monoprint and then I added some paint on the outside. You know, I looked at texture and forms when I did that as well. And I also looked closely at the details on flowers to then create some detail here and started building flowers off the back of this. So your main focus today is to create a couple of pages like this using the mono printing process. I would recommend you do two A4 pages. Um, you don't have to label them necessarily right now. I just want you to really immerse yourself in the creative practice. And please make sure you watch the mono print video that I link in um, so you know how to do it. And then your homework for the week is, like I said, to improve the pieces that you did from Monday's lesson and to improve these um, once I've given you the feedback off them. Hopefully that is clear year 10. Um, that is Thursday's task for you. You're creating your own mono prints, watching the video um, on here from the National Gallery and watching my video and you're then using a photograph or some inspiration you found online to then build some ideas using different mediums and materials around these mono prints. So have a fab rest of the week, take care, and I will catch up with you at the end of the day. Please make sure you submit Thursday's work by 4pm for feedback. Thanks, Year 10. Bye.